Hi, Greg Perry, the Historic Preservationist. Welcome to the Conservation Studio. Um, new, uh, a new arrival in for a, a total restoration with sympathetic conservation overlays in mind. Um, you know, when I first saw this piece, it, it, didn't, it didn't really move me that much, but it, in a way it did. It looked like it could, could have been something from the, uh, the Art Deco period of the early you know, 20th century. Um, but, you know, as you further study this piece as, as it was coming in, um, you understand what cutting edge design this is. Just take a look. This is German, obviously. It's chunky, it's fat, but yet it's actually kind of sexy in, in its Bombay designs on here. Just look at this. This is, this is an absolute masterpiece. We can look at all the English um, straight line type secretaries all day. We have a Bombay secretary. Everything is doing some a little bomba here. So we have the sides on the top, the midsection, and the base. And the base is forming an S-curve, a very negated type S-curve. And the front of the drawers are going in an S-curve. We have a wonderful flap instead of the standard French and English flat flap. We have an OG style flap. The whole front of the case coming down, all the drawer fronts are sculpted. So... Everything is sculpted, and, and those of you out there that can't imagine the kind of work, I mean, people that made this were magicians. They were spectacular artisans and craftsmen. They weren't your run-of-the-mill lawyer today, that you, 10 million in this country, or plumbers or electricians. They weren't those kind of people that do mundane stuff. These were artisans and true craftsmen. Bench made by one individual normally in Germany, this type of piece. So let's just take a look at some of the immediate problems. We have veneer loss. We have a major piece of molding loss up here. Keep in mind that this molding is not running with the grain, so to speak, straight across. It's cross-sectioned. So that's telling us a time frame. That's putting this somewhere in the early 1700s. It could go, you know, 1690, 1710, 1720. So we have the cross grains. Unless it was a high-end reproduction that somebody's copying, I really don't think so. Testing on the, the, the wood here is telling it's around 1700. So all of our moldings are cross grain moldings. Very important feature. This is a quarter column, believe it or not. Look at this. I'm studying this for the first time. An absolute magnificent quarter column. A quarter column here. Not your typical straight English flutes or your your bucolic, bumpkinish, American-type straight quarter columns with flutes. No, this is following the curvature. Absolute masterpiece. Um, so we have loss up here in the moldings. We have, we have glue failures all around, down both sides of the top. But let's step back. Three sections. Top, midsection, and bottom. And this thing weighs a ton. It's weighing in over 225 pounds. So she's a heavy girl. She's got a big bottom. Um, fine veneers. Look at this, this walnut, the wonderful walnut veneer here, okay? Cross-banded in mahogany. But note, the mahogany has faded considerably, considerably. So a little bit less down here with the, uh, the, the, the flap, I don't know. This could have been refinished uh, because the cross-banding is really alive. Possibly there was some structural issues. They came back and they had to make the issues and then they had to do refinishing. So, but uh, an absolute masterpiece. So other than that, just take a look at some basic veneer we have missing. Veneer that's very loose right here. Pieces broken off of a drawer front. This is standard stuff. Standard stuff, some idiot forgets to pull the loper out and he breaks the hinge and you know, it's forever in ruin. You can't fix it properly. You know, the same thing here. So, and you tell people again and again, but this is some 300 and some years back. So, again, major loss over here. Uh, major loss here, what's promoting this is the dovetail ribs. They keep expanding, contraction, blowing this piece of molding out here and down here. <coughs> Shrinkage. Wood over a period of 7,500 years gets to a point sometimes where it almost petrifies. Some wood stops shrinking, stops moving from season to season. Other wood continues to do it, much less so. Some wood does it the same day as, as it was cut, the same absorption rate 
extraction rate, absorption rate, the same thing. Some goes back, so there's all type of variants. And noticing we have an oak superstructure in this piece, and that's part of owing to its extreme weight. Um, we have some jury rig hardware up here. Look at this. This is a this is a real classic here. Um, and the uh, the poles the poles were covered. Uh, the poles are out of actually a, a, a base metal, uh, a pewter type metal. So that's what we have here. They're really dirty, and they're they're going to clean up really well. So let's uh, let's start examining the top down. And if we run over on this video. We're going to break and we're going to pick up and do the second half of the video. So again, magnificent piece. Look at the door. The door is S-curving. Phenomenal. Up and beyond that, remember, this, all this, and we're going to call it marquetry because it's actually marquetry. It's, it's various veneer shapes covering the superstructure of the substrate. Okay? And also, also, this door is not just S-curving. It's curving we have a hump down here. It's very imperceptible, but this hump goes in and then out. So masters that were shaping this stuff. It appears to be a replaced lock. Um, possibly not, but I think it is, obviously. We have some mold, some mold degradation in here. Um, a lot of the secondary wood in here in the drawers and the interior of this cabinet are pine. They're yellow pine, they're yellow Germanic pine, super heavy stuff. The superstructure is out of oak. And, uh, but again, you can appreciate how the cross banding is in, in the perimeter of the door opening. Let's take a look at one of the drawers at the top. This is a fly drawer. Dovetails. Look at the drawer construction. The dovetails aren't great. Very bucolic, back, bucolic backwoodsy type stuff. Not to worry because all the dance on this girl is in the front, is in the veneer, is in her beautiful shape of her body. We're not worried about the dovetail drawers here. And too many of the American pieces, everybody's worried about how fine can you get him? How fine did he make him? And, and the, some of these federal pieces are just atrocious. They have no flow or no exemplification of of a, of a human figure so they're just they're just sticks but yet everybody a lot of these american people these uh, con quote connoisseurs want to embellish because how good the dovetails who cares of the dovetails of this it's a masterpiece so the guy that made the dovetails the gal left a gap in the middle the same gap here look at the drawer construction typical early germany early 17th century bottoms nailed right to the bottoms this this drawer is heavy this is a five pound drawer here this is yellow pine again the drawers cross grain back to front leaving this back portion to expand and contract right now it's a little bit expanded so okay and this here is a cutout for a lock so i can get into the center portion and push a wooden piece in and lock the top two drawers. So we have secret locks from Germany. So it appears up here, we have a little secret here. These, uh, these, these ribbings are going into the side are, uh, are just dadoed. They're dadoed with a tongue. I mean, they're not dovetailed in, but let's get down here to a more interesting drawer on the bottom. So look at this, it almost looks like a dough tray, but so we have a, a square side here, same drawer configuration, same dovetail configuration, but you know, it's not only on angle, but it's rounded. So, I mean, it takes a hell of a lot of effort to do that. And when you feel these drawers, they're all hand plane. So the really interesting thing is all these drawers are lockable from the inside. So you lock your cabinet, take the key, nobody gets in the top. Keep the kids out. First time we've gone in here. Again, another, another lock on the drawer there. So let's move down in, and again, three sections here. So before we open up the, uh, the flat. So, ah, oh, we got pieces, we got pieces, the missing pieces, a whole series of missing elements. Tom got tomato seeds, the fireball tomato. So just what we wanted. Uh, but nevertheless, take, take a look at the drawer front here, the sculpting involved in that. Beautiful, take a look at the dovetail structure. 
It's not those fine pointy ones, but it took a hell of a lot of effort to get them where they are. I have a drawer here, both sides. This drawer is being held up. This drawer is actually locked, so we got to get in there and figure this unlocking mechanism. And look at this. Maybe we'll call this a pencil drawer. So down here, we have some quarter sawn oak in the bottom for the bottom, and it's running front to back. So typical in a German style desk. Um, we let this we let this run long in this drawer, so it bangs up against the back. It is its own stop. Okay, squarish dovetails. And the same over here. Let's see if this guy's locked. No, this one's not locked. Here's where the lock would slide through. Some more missing components. And here's the lopers. And remember, the lopers are to hold the flap. So if you know anybody that's desk, and we have a loper that's stuck here, so we're not going to force it at this point. But we're good to put... Look at the heft of this. One and three-eighths inch thick. Huge lap joint doing the superstructure, putting this together. And look at the look at the wonderful uh, S curve we have in here. Phenomenal stuff. Original lock in this one. But uh, somebody did uh, quite the number here. Look at this. It's beautiful silk brocade, which is coming off um, down to a leather surface, which is absolutely shot. That's going to be pulled off. This is not original. I, I don't even think this is leather. It looks like it looks like cardboard or something. Um, it is, it's not, and that's going to come off and we're going to determine what color and what kind of grain leather was on here and, uh, put it back on. So inside we have uh, a lot of small, small drawers, I'm not going to call them secret drawers, but so no, no surprises down here. There's no, uh, we'll just check this out. See, see if there's any issues here with this bowing up. I don't think so. No m removable bottom for secret compartment there. So. get this tucked back in it's worthless but let's get down here on the floor these weigh a ton some of these these drawers are 35 pounds each we get inside take a look at this lock these are german technology of around 1700 at its best look at look at the yellow pine in here look at the broad boards for the bottoms this drawer has been together since around 1700 can you believe it um, wonderful lock. I mean, thank God that the, that we, the key is in here. For me to make a key, it could be anywhere from three, four hundred dollars plus, depending on the stock. If I, how much I have to play to make this key. So it's it's a wonderful thing to have. It. And uh, I have to determine if the feet have been cut down. They're they're very very stout. Uh, it just seems. I understand this is a massive piece laying low to the ground, but again, design wise, take a look at this. This cutout gives the illusion to me that these are drawers here and these are drawers here. But no, we have three broad base drawers. So we're getting a wonderful illusion. A simple V tool can handle that in your carving studio. So, uh, and we'll determine whether the feet have been cut down. I mean, if this was around 1700, chances are it could have been a dirt floor, a brick floor, a stone floor in a German castle on the Rhine. Who knows? But if that's the case, these, these guys probably are down two or three inches. So um, we're going to have to rebuild the, the, uh, the feet up. So we're going to look for comparative examples uh, where applicable. So I think that's about it, but uh, just a magnificent piece. This was made by a superior craftsman or set of craftsmen, um, not by run-of-the-mill people that work in mundane jobs. So uh, very happy to have this in my studio. It's an honor and a pleasure to work on this. And hopefully the work I put into this is going to continue this piece until the world continues to turn or ceases to turn rather. So Greg Perry, the historic preservationist, signing out in the conservation studio.